Let me call the Berkeley City Planning Commission to order for its regular meeting of Tuesday, November the 25th, 2014. Would you all please rise for the pledge to the flag? You could have a roll call, please. Martin Smith? Here. Tungary? Richardson? Here. Murad? Morell? Here. Buckler? Here. Shadel? Pop? Here. Burnett? Present. Now I think I'll take a motion to approve the agenda for this evening. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Pop. Moved. Could I have a. Um, Roll call vote, please. Yes. Martin Smith? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Pop? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Morrell? Yes. Murad? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> guys are making this really hard. And Barnett? Yes. Did I get everybody? We got them all. Shadel. Shadel, I'm sorry. Is this like April 1st? You, we're, we're approving the minutes. Did you vote? Shadel? Yes. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Um, now I'll, entert I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of October the 28th, 2014. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes Ms. of October 28th, 2014. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Buckler. Is there a second, please? Second. Second by Commissioner Richards. And any discussion on the minutes? Hearing no, any raising any issues, we'll take a vote on the minutes. Smith? Yes. Shadow? Yes. Pop? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Morrell? Yes. Murad? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Communications? Um, you got Downtown Development Authority minutes. You have some emails regarding an update on the Coolidge project between 12 Mile and Webster that um, you reviewed and recommended to Council last month. And you have a letter uh, that I sent on your behalf uh, regarding the Huntington Woods Master Plan and comments and of support and uh, interest in uh, working on 11 Mile Road. Then I'll entertain citizens' comments. Any citizen who would care to address the Planning Commission this evening on any topic not on our agenda may do so at this time. Citizens will have an opportunity to participate in discussion items as they have are brought up on the agenda this evening. Hearing no citizens stepping forward, we'll move on to item number one. Item number one is discussion regarding proposals received for residential form-based code project. At the um, last meeting, you had requested additional information from LSL planning uh, regarding their, if ad what additional meetings would cost and their um, hourly rates for additional work. And that has been provided to you. What's the desire of the planning commission? Well, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Martin Smith. The hourly rates aren't, uh, are well within the, uh, you know, I was looking at some of these others and I completely forgot what was in them, but the hourly rates are, are fine. You know, just want to make sure. In fact, I think they mentioned they, they're giving us a uh, frequent customer discount. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, which is fine. Okay. We do the same thing. So, uh, that's the... I think that's the only, although I would like to bring it to everybody's attention, this is the 2014 fee schedule, subject to change at the beginning of each calendar year, but, uh, which is, what, a month from now, so, but I don't know if that's going to be an issue. So, other than that. We're good to go. I think so. Any other comments on it or anything? Hey, what is the desire? Do you want to make a recommendation? Well, I guess that's what we're doing is making a recommendation. Yeah. Yep. Make a recommendation. 
Yeah, I, I advised the city manager that I, th I anticipated you were leaning toward a recommendation at tonight's meeting and that if that happened, I would be at the meeting on the 15th. I've already sent a, um, a contract for the city attorney to review okay. in anticipation, but obviously that's not holding you to anything if you right. wanna hold off or however you wanna do it. I think we're gonna just move ahead. Okay. But let's see what. No pressure. No pressure here. Somebody wanna make a motion? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we recommend recommend to retain LSL for the form-based code work okay. in their proposal. Is there a second? The add-ons. Okay. With there's, is there a second? Support. Supported by Commissioner Richardson. Discussion. Okay. Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Excuse me, Mr. Well, Chairman. I'm sorry. Does this go to City Council or is this us? Goes to City Council. City okay. Council has, has to, to, has has to, to approve enter it. into the contract. Okay. Thank you. You ready? Oh, call. Okay. Um, Shadel. Yes. Morell. Yes. Murad. Yes. Pop. Yes. Richardson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Buckler. Yes. Burnett. Yes. Okay. Good. Get that moving. So will that go to Council? Walk on. Second I, me. Second. I'm not here next week, so it will um, move on the 15th. Yeah. Okay. Item number two. Item number two is discussion regarding possible changes to Berkeley City Code, Chapter 138 zoning relative to architectural features or projections. Um, we've looked at this a few times, and uh, I have sent this draft to the city attorney, um, but. Let me know if you want to keep tweaking it or what you want to do. Do you want to tweak this? What do you want to do with it? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Martin Smith. Second paragraph. Yeah, I was thinking about that as we were talking about residential last time. districts. Yes. Projection may extend into the right of way, distance two thirds of the width of the abutting sidewalk, provided at least eight feet above the grade. So, can I project my second floor of my building over the right of way, yeah. the entire second floor? two-thirds of the yes width. do we really want that well so if I have a nine-foot sidewalk just make the math easy I can project the entire second floor over six feet over the right-of-way well I guess we wanted to find how much of a projection we said 30 percent of the wall surface area in the first paragraph so mm -hmm. if we want to copy that and or however you want. I, it occurred to me as we were discussing it, I know you guys hadn't seen this, that we were talking about different things, and I thought, but what if you do have a balcony, or what if you have something, or a bay window, as uh, Commissioner Murad mentioned, and so I asked our building official, so can you do that? And that's where this comes out of the building code, this rather two-thirds. Two-thirds? Two th yes. Isn't that awkward? But it two does say that. Two-thirds is awkward. It is, well, but that's uh, what the building I code says. So even if it's 30%, you know, I, I'm just, playing devil's advocate here sure so you know so we can we can extend if we have an eight foot sidewalk or let's say nine foot again to keep the math simple mm -hmm. i can extend 30 percent of my s second floor third floor whatever i have 30 percent of my building six feet over the right of way mr chair Ms. Buckler. eight feet high enough shouldn't it be higher than that well, again, this is out of the building code. I get it. But and I mean, if we no, want, well. Five feet, two, something like three feet. It doesn't yeah, seem like we're enough. talking commercial district. You were talking commercial. So mm -hmm. I would think you'd be a little higher than eight. But well, I'm that's a secondary yeah. item. I'm just concerned okay, about we're taking projecting okay, two thirds into the right of way. Let's talk about the projection. Like a, then we'll talk about height. Like Mr. You Chair, know. like a movie marquee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. More than eight feet. Right, but. But I think you can buy yourself a whole lot of uh, square footage here, if that's what we're asking. Two thirds over the right of way. I mean, that's. I may I uh, Mr. ask, Richard, Mr. Richardson? What's while the, we're all thinking about it. What's the downside of extending it that far? Dark sidewalks. <laughs> yeah, dark well, sidewalks. Yeah. But, but shelter from shelter rain. rain. It is. Well, three feet probably would be. Six feet would be. Well, right. yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying it needs to be right. two-thirds. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
so I can extend my uh, square fit footage on a building what's, considerably. What's, well, again, this is just proposed. I, I know, I know. But I'm, I'm just and, throwing and this out yeah. because that, that's what someone smarter than all of us, not really, but so, someone's going to say, hey, feet, you know, I got a 40, 50 foot wide building or lot, three stories tall. Ten foot, nine foot sidewalk. Well, do you want to limit the percentage of the wall surface area? Oh, we can also well, I imagine this is a sub paragraph of the paragraph above, right? It's well, does it still, it, but it doesn't say that. That's why I'm doesn't. asking. So we should look at it and decide again. And we can strike this and move forward with residential. But it, as we were discussing it, it occurred to me that yeah, well, what if you wanted to have a bay window? sticking out over the sidewalk mm -hmm. and six feet over a nine foot this sidewalk. is what the building code says you can do right. what's our widest sidewalk in the city 10 feet maybe yeah, yeah. 10 so 15 maybe at the bump outs yeah i'd have to i'm trying to think so we're really encroaching on the uh you know you look at these form based codes and they always have these nice diagrams of the the roadway and all the happy people and the trees and then the buildings go up. Well, now all of a sudden, our buildings go up, we can go in like that and up again. So I, I'm have just... Any trees. Hmm? You wouldn't have any trees. Well, there's that. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you again, look at traditional downtowns, they really didn't have a lot of trees. They had oh, awnings no. and they had That's signs. True. Downtowns That's true. don't want trees because they grow and they cover signs. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but you yeah. want shade. Yeah, you, people don't want that. Their and you businesses want signs don't want so you can move people around. Right, That's businesses right. don't uh, want trees. Mr. Chair, what happens if there's an existing tree in front of a property that wants to bump out into the right-of-way? Do we remove the tree, and whose expense? The, if it's a, the only instances we've had of that are residential development, and if a tree has to go, well, I'm giving you that that's been the history of it. So if it's development and a tree has to go, they have to pay $450. And, and they remove the tree. That's no, they pay 450 and we plant a tree. Because oh, okay. other people aren't allowed to plant in the right of way. Okay. Mr. Richardson. Um, I'm kind of offering this comment in the spirit of moving the discussion uh, to, to the most relevant uh, level, I guess. Um, wouldn't approving this uh, further the goal of um, providing commercial owners and commercial commercial building owners more flexibility to accommodate modern businesses uh, and wouldn't that be desirable for uh, our community and I, I, I qualify my statement by I I'm not sure it would but but I, I it occurs to me that it might so I'm just wondering if we should be thinking in that way Mr. Chairman, I, I, I guess Mr. Morell, you've been very silent on this. Well, you know, I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that, you know, bah, one building wouldn't be such a bad thing. And then Six, I five. start thinking, <laughs> okay, so I'm the building next door and I paid all this money for a projecting sign. <laughs> Exposure. <laughs> built a second and third floor six right. feet out and now my projecting sign only works from one direction. And I honestly think that Ultimately, what this is leading for is we need a definition, a projection that cuts out the actual, you know, the, the finished wall surface. You know, if it's a sign, if it's an awning, if it's, I think the intent here is, from a projection standpoint, is that if it's a sign, it's an awning. If it's something that, you know, is a little less intense in nature rather than the entire floor, then that's sort of what we were going for. Here. I think that's the intent, yeah. and that's why I'm asking this, that's why I asked the question initially. I could see someone saying, the way it's written, and I'm just bringing this up for mm -hmm. everyone, mm -hmm. I'm adding square footage to my building. Mm -hmm. Hart Hartfields could have added another lane. <laughs> they could have. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's They could have. So, and that's the only reason I bring it up. I just want right. you know, everybody to mm -hmm. think this through. Sure. Because uh, the people I work for would love this. <laughs> so what would be okay with? We'd be okay with a bay window. We'd be okay with a balcony. Limited to one thirty uh, percent of that wall face, a third. 
can you phrase it in such a way that it's not usable floor space? Well, because well, I think that's, that's what a balcony, you know. That's a balcony can be. Balcony is a. Well, I, I just threw out what would be. I'm just throwing out elements that would be less offensive than right. the no. building. <clears throat> and I think I think the idea that, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I think the idea that there's a bay window or or whether it's a traditional bay or a modern bay, whatever, a projection could be a very nice thing. Could be, yeah. but I don't know whether it would go out six feet or not. Well, that that's oh. that's the issue. Two, well, yeah. two-thirds of the of right-of-way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can change that to one-third or even yeah. a quarter. Again, this is a starting point on what exactly. the building code allows. Exactly. Allows. And we do, have regular, we do have ordinances regarding sign projections and projections mm -hmm. and awning projections yes. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's the desire of the plan? You want to reduce this to something a little, or you want to leave it? What do you want to do? I suppose Obviously, I we're not really happy with what we got. <laughs> suppose if you reduce it enough, it's going to, as a practical matter, preclude any anything but. Well, well it, but I. Story. I think you until we start third. giving away elevators and the cost of an elevator, it's. It, this is rather academic when it comes to a second story. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I see it a lot like, you know, we talked about porches a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, extending a porch into the setback, which is great if it's an open porch. Mm -hmm. If it uh, evolves into a closed porch, now all of a sudden, you know, your neighbors have as much right to the view as you do. And you're pushing yourself out, much like what Eric was saying, your neighbors in retail have as much right of the, the the visible signage that you do. You start pushing your building out and you're starting to block their signs. It's the same type of thing. So we have to define what, well, and I don't think two thirds of the sidewalk we, is right. We can limit it to three feet too. If yeah, we want I mean to. 30 inches, three feet, not to exceed. Right. Yeah. Something because like that. Because we're doing that. If that's what we're looking for. Yard setback. I think that's what you're driving to drive for. I think that's where you're driving. Because someone can block their neighbor with an awning too. Their neighbor's sign. I mean, we yeah, could we could happen. leave it two thirds and not to exceed uh, three feet. No, that's a well, that's three foot sidewalk. Or no, four and a half foot sidewalk. Yeah. Mm. So or one third and not to exceed. Okay, I think we need. We're going to keep. We're going to add the thirty percent of the wall surface area. Correct. Yeah. For that. I would think. Part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it, maybe it's already implied here. I didn't read it that no, way when I, I first read it. No, I was just it. throwing it out. Yeah. There was I, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Because we're talking about architectural features or projections, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then we go in non-residential districts mm -hmm. yeah. that we, we have these additional or, or, or other requirements. And I think it needs to be more than eight feet. Well, that's a practical thing. Hmm. Okay. I've, I've got, I'm going to add the 30% phrase again. What did we decide on, or are you guys still I think not to exceed three feet. Hmm. Okay, three feet. Do we have some language in there, just yeah, like better, above? So then that's not going to be, that's that not. would end up being just a portion of a balcony, let's say, or a bay window. Okay. I would allow like a Queen Anne style turret or something that oh. projects off the front. You know, know that's, that's what we're talking about with a bay window or something. It could be something like that or, or a modern. And maybe we, we go back to the paragraph above, you know, not more than two inches for each one foot of, right. well, not setback, but. Um, there is no setback here. But there's no but, setback. But, but, for but, the, but for the front and rear yard, we width. are saying no more I than like, three feet. I like the idea of a balcony, though. I mean. Mm -hmm. I think I Amy's going to do some word magic on this for next month. Okay. <laughs> Balconies are. How about the height? Needs to be higher than eight feet. Obviously. Well, eight feet is a code minimum, but that do, that's not it's practical well. for a um, first twelve floor. feet. I was gonna say twelve. I'd say ten or twelve. Yeah, I mean a, a typical retail ground floor is gonna be way 12. higher than eight feet. See about twelve to fourteen, maybe eleven actually, with a lot of the buildings 11. we have here. Eleven would make a big 11. difference, but a bal I mean, I think balconies are nice on a downtown. Really. Mm -hmm. um, 11. It makes it attractive. <laughs> no less than 11. Balcony. This one has 11. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised what we fit into buildings. <laughs> Only one ladder. You'd be a surprise <laughs> how you can fit two stories into a one story building. Um, 
you know, maybe a, a, a make it so a, nefarious architects can't mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of luck. <laughs> that. We'll find a way. That we always more and more. You just described our job definition. More than one way. Right. Pursue liberal code interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> So we like 11, is that it? Mm. Pardon me? Do, do, are we sticking with 11? It's <laughs> really. Well, <laughs> if you're 12 foot floor to floor, you have structure, you have a soffit or a ceiling. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's really a reasonable number. 11. Hey, it's a funny number, that's it's all. Number. Okay, well, it's yeah. prime. Yeah. Okay. So everybody gets a chuckle when they read it. <laughs> Final tap I, I just threw a number out. I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it essentially reads something like this. A non-residential <laughs> district where no front yard setback is required. A projection may extend into the right-of-way for a distance of three feet, provided that it is at least 11 feet above grade. <laughs> the total of all projections into the right-of-way shall not exceed 30% of that wall surface area. Not going to block anybody's sign with that. No. Nope. Even with a blade wall on both ends of your building. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can we uh, change the word grade to sidewalk? Sure. Abutting the sidewalk, provided that it's at least 11 feet above yeah. the sidewalk? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we're good? Good. So we'll see this back next. You want to see it or you want to do a public hearing on it? You want to do a public hearing on it or yep. you want to see it? Yeah. Public hearing? I think December? we can go for it. Yeah, I think we I can. Need, so. Don't I typically need a motion for that? You guys do a motion? Well, no? since I picked 11 feet. <laughs> Mr. Would, would you make a motion? Since I pulled a number out of something and uh, make a motion to, uh, well, what am I making a motion for? Set a public hearing? Set a public hearing. Do we have enough time? Isn't it? What's I, the date? I anticipated you might be doing this, so we're all good. It'll be the fifth. It'll be the ninth. So you already have it, it advertised. I do. See, so she knew I was going to say eleven feet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I make the motion to set uh, the public hearing. I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Morrell. Let's no. take a roll call vote on it. Who supported? I'm sorry. Mr. Morrell. Thank you. Sorry, we had an eleven sidebar over here. Okay, Shadel. Yes. Morrell. Yes. Buckler. Yes. And Gary. Yes. Smith? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Hop? Yes. Murad? Yes. Barnett? Yes. All right. Item three. Three is discussion regarding possible changes to Berkeley City Code, Chapter 138 zoning relative to how building height is determined. Okay, we've beat this one up quite a bit too. I don't know how much more we're gonna beat it up, but what's the desire of the Planning Commission? Mr. Chair, I think um, Ms. Vanson did a nice job capturing our comments into this document, and I see no issues with it. Okay. I particularly like the pictures. Yeah, those were good ones, weren't they? I like that. Mr. I, I, I have a question. Mr. Richardson. Um, the uh, list of exclusions in the first paragraph um, include penthouses. Um, I'm just wondering wh what what that's doing in there. It doesn't seem to be consistent with the other other items on that list, and um, um, I, I can't picture a penthouse ex not exceeding four feet in height. I, what is the what is the rationale for that? I don't even know because it's really old language, so I don't even know what a penthouse in 1950 would have meant. It, Mr. Chairman, like an elevator bulkhead. Right. Well, it, it would have been an elevator um, um, machine room or a mechanical room or something like that, at the top of a shaft. You know, we can say mechanical penthouse or something Mr. if you want. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Morrow. Building code defines a penthouse as a rooftop structure whose area does not exceed one third the area of the roof. Thank you. I used to do this for a living. I still do, but I don't remember that one. <laughs> so when you're talking about a penthouse, you know, it's, you know, 
you got a 9,000 square foot building, you can have a 3,000 square foot penthouse. And <laughs> penthouses are exempt from a lot of other code requirements, right. which is why they define them that way. As a rooftop structure, I, you I, can have a. But what would be going on in a penthouse? Mechanical equipment, okay. elevator Mechanical equipment. Top the elevator. But you're absolutely right. Now that Mr. Morell mentions that, we have used this several times for oh, very baby. large, very large architectural features on buildings. Oh, that, maybe it's yeah. a good, it's a, it's an architect's tool for, you know, you can do a, you can do a building that's not a high rise and you can add a penthouse on top mm -hmm. and get 75 that extra, feet, I think. that extra area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you don't even have to, you don't even have to spray fireproof it. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a rooftop structure. It's not a penthouse and, right. and it's not a floor. Right. Right. But it can, you're right. It can be one third of the building footprint. Yep. Or the roof I, I didn't ask the question because I was objecting. Although the <laughs> now you understand the, it. The so kinds of penthouses that we're talking about were not what I pictured when we. Still at all. <laughs> I, I, I think I it's just, a fair question. Yeah, I, I just wonder if there is an issue with including uh, this sort of structure. Does it, or, or is it not an issue? I, I, it I, I, it sounds like these are these are in a positive way. I, these are needed, uh, this is a needed uh, in some cases. feature. If you want to refer to it as a rooftop structure, it's defined by the building code. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what, I think that's what they meant here when the yeah. original 1960s okay. sort of thing. Okay. The term t the term that yeah. the code uses now is rooftop structure. Well, that raises another question, maybe a little bit more serious question in my mind. Is, is the language here too archaic? Do, do we, should, we, should we think about modernizing it? Make this a little more uh, contemporary. And I'm a little stumped by elevator bulkhead. Yeah, I don't know what bulk <laughs> elevator <laughs> bulkhead <laughs> is. Seemed okay, actually. I'm stumped by a four foot flagpole. That's a pretty small <laughs> flagpole. Um, well, well, no, I th I think the parapet wall yeah, is the only. That's one the that's parapet wall. Not okay, okay because the way yeah. it's the way it's You're written right. with comma. no Oxford four comma after spires, it kind of comma. It kind of reads like all these things. Yeah, you need the Oxford comma. Height. Domes and spire, dorms or st domes or spires, and parapet walls not exceeding four feet in height. Yeah. I guess I need a comma. Yeah, I need the comma there. And we don't want elevator bulkhead. Is that what we're saying? I don't know. No. We'll because if you're that. going to if you're going to have anything with the elevator, it's good. You're going to have. It's going to be a penthouse. It's going to be bigger or. Well. Is it? Is it? Well, maybe not big necessarily the anymore because the elevator is. I Wouldn't. Know, they're redesigning them so that but I, again, how it's done. you don't need all that up there anymore. Well, you don't, but, but you need overshoot. Yeah, I mean, they still sell them. They still elevator. Yeah, I think. Yeah, you only need it really for overshoot now. I think. Yeah, over. Yeah. And the it could uh, be three feet. Yep. Instead of a whole room. Yep. Right. Um, I am a little stumped by the word "or" between domes and spires. Wouldn't that be domes, comma spires, sure. comma? Sure. It's we can do that. I mean, it's possible a building I've might have a dome and a spire. Like I said, I just added all the different you know, roofs onto it. Dome? I didn't really look at mm -hmm. spire. Starts out as a dome and cuts out. Could be a truncated dome, though. Yeah. No spire for you. So we leave an elevator bucket. Architects care. Well, we do, if I may, uh, I, delete elevator bulkhead and put in mechanical penthouse. Yeah. That's what I would do. Okay. Mechanical penthouses. Yeah. Remove elevator bulkhead yeah. and include Nobody mechanical as a modifier for penthouse. Yeah. yeah. And mechanical. And because so that would I include can't all of have a penthouse? Technically, roof structure no. can't be mechanical. Then it's, then it's just the top floor to rent cover out. Elevators, so. Yeah. Not that anybody would want to rent out, no. Well. Where this is written, I could. Be four feet. <laughs> not anymore. No, not anymore. I'm not sure we want to see that kind of thing here. <laughs> 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 Ten-story building. I'm envisioning building on 12 mile. Just, um, just over um, there. We did have a proposal uh -huh. for a seven-story high-rise. Mm -hmm. With a waterfall. Mm -hmm. With a waterfall. Yep, I remember the waterfall. The waterfall. Yeah. On the north the wall. You forgot the waterfall? How could he you forget the, the waterfall? He wanted the seven-story waterfall. We're 24 seconds is now. Yes. When it was the flower yeah. shop. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Wow. Yeah. That's I was kind of sorry that one shop. didn't get built. Yeah. That would have been cool. <laughs> it's a big flower shop. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Ms. The Moore. definition of mansard roof does not match the image on the next page. <sighs> Why? In that, well, it includes a, I don't know, 
Do you want me to draw some lines? Oh. It looks like that. <laughs> like a hip. Do you want me to do that? Like I will do that. Well, I mean, if either that or change your. No, I can't find a really good one. Yeah, this is the best one I can find. But it's I've got looked. that. Yeah, you're right. It's got a hip roof. It's, it may, my answer has a hip roof on top of it. I will draw a hip roof on oh, top of it. So it's not ridge. a central ridge, then a central point. And yeah, should actually, it you're right. Should it also be not greater than 312 pitch? Because you're really a mansard. Not it's basically a flat roof on a very. Yeah, it should be not greater. You're right. Oh, I'm sorry. Greater than. Yeah, that's a pretty good. Thank you. From a central and point, a central not point. a central yep. ridge. Central point. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you draw these wonderful drawings, Amy? Oh, heavens no. Uh, I asked because I have done drawings of driveways, but not of roofs. Okay, because on second page says below roof lines take one of the six basic shapes. Well, I can think of a lot more. So oh, I would say okay. Well, wipe generally that out. take one of six basic shapes. Well, I'll just wipe that out. That's fine. I think you can do that. I can do that. Why raise the question? Thank you. These images aren't copyrighted, are they? No, they're on the internet. It's fine. Oh, okay. I see. That's Kate. Took I out. found them informative. Thank you. I think these were drawn in the 1300s and we've been using the same drawing. <laughs> I thought these were better than the ones we currently have, though. There. Yeah. They were drawn in the 1200s. Yeah. <coughs> Wonderful. Okay, other changes? Anything else? I guess we beat it to death again. Yes. I think that this was all <laughs> very helpful. Up. And I believe this is one that will definitely get challenged at some point. But Oh, yeah, I'm sure it will. So do you want to make a re recommendation on this one, too? Sure, I'll make a recommendation okay. that we uh, recommend approval. Uh, no, no, no. Well, no, I mean no, no. recommend. You're going to set a public hearing. Public, public hearing. hearing. Set a public hearing. Oh, I'm looking at the council. Recommend approval of council. Yep, public hearing first. I'm sorry. Yep. Same date? Yep. Or will that be? Yeah, January? we might as well. We, we'll pack the room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. Okay. So somebody's made a motion. Will somebody second it, please? I second it. Ms. Buckler has seconded it. So now we'll take a roll call vote on that. Richardson. Yes. Pangari. Yes. Morrell. Yes. Shadle. Yes. Buckler. Yes. Smith. Yes. Murad. Yes. Pop. Yes. Burnett. Yes. Item four. Item four. Um, I had uh, this discussion regarding city planners report on the high cost of free parking. So I read this book and I thought it was really good. And I summarized it and then I gave you a chapter that I thought was really, really good. And I gave it to you last month and I was just sort of wondering what you thought of it. Ms. Buckler. Ms. Vanson, I thought you did a very nice job summarizing this and it thoroughly created more questions <laughs> than it answered, unfortunately, versus curbside parking, public parking. And it made, um, I'm not sure what to do with it. I mean, my takeaway is approach all private parking lots and come up with some kind of cooperative city agreement and strategically limit on-street parking between open parking and <coughs> residential only parking. I, I find that very daunting and how do you manage it and uh, enforce it? Yeah. I, you know, I, I had a discussion with the public safety director because he got a copy of this as well and we were chatting <laughs> about it and, and I mentioned one street that I, and I really think there's maybe two streets in the city that are a problem. Um, and, and he completely agreed with me that it was a problem. He also recognized though that other folks that may not have as big of a problem, may think they have as big of a problem, that this mm -hmm. becomes something that's political and all of a sudden you can't park anywhere. And I said, well, I said, I think we need to come up with something. I said, because we've you know, heard loud and clear that, and I said, and I don't think in order to thrive we can keep 
knocking down houses and continuing to have more and more parking and I don't think that that's going to build the kind of community that anybody wants to see. He completely, the public safety director completely acknowledged that as well. And I said, but how do you work out this tension then between who gets to park where and how do you manage the density that we want to see without people taking advantage of it and making residences feel unsafe, unsecure because there are strangers walking by all the time. And, and I don't know how to, how to work that out exactly because I understand his point that there's going to be um, streets where people think that they're really very congested and this is this book says it's 85 percent that's it you know that's really your your threshold and if it's less than that forget it it's not going to work and it's um, there's no point to it but I, I think th this holds some key and if it's not this year it's something to keep in the back pocket as far as how to manage because I don't think we want to I know there was a lot of confliction over SHW when they expanded and you know rezoned one house and then another house and you know wanting that parking lot to be better used instead of being empty half the time which is what we have with our shared parking agreements is you can do that and however if somebody decides to not play nice in the sandbox we really are very much stuck and that's unfortunate because it should be a win-win with a parking lot that's been developed and if somebody can help share in the use of that and the maintenance of it, I think that that is a win-win and it baffles my mind that a business wouldn't take advantage of it and uh, but I'm stunned at the number of times I've heard businesses say no I'm not going to do that and and I, and I don't understand it. I think I understand some of it. I understand some of it because we were faced with that problem several years ago when we were developing the Oakland Center out in, in Farmington Hills on 12 Mile Road. And in theory, we really didn't have enough parking for the size of the building we were putting up. And granted, the student body was going to assemble primarily in the evenings, five nights or five days a week. And the rest of the time, the thing was sitting <coughs> vacant, what we had. And we approached adjacent businesses that could provide us parking at the hours that we needed it because their parking lots would be totally deserted and not totally deserted, but minimum use. And the issues that came back were primarily liability. There was concerns about the liability of allowing and how would you adapt a, an agreement for handling those issues of liability. And then there's also the issues of maintenance, if you have to do any maintenance in the evenings or in the night, but a lot of businesses do it on the weekends in parking lots when they have to restripe and do work. But that was the big issue, was the liability that was. Yeah, because I would think the growing. maintenance could otherwise, be worked out. Otherwise, it made perfect sense. And um, I think we did come up with something down the road that we were able to handle. There were, there were a couple that came through for us, but it was a, that was the touchy issue, was the liability. And I think that's part of this whole issue. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Martin Smith. We've had an experience with, with this with property owners saying, you know, that's great, but someday I'm going to want to sell my property. And that's if that's a parking agreement that goes on forever and ever, that's an encumbrance on me closing a deal. The new property, you know, that makes his property, in his mind, less valuable. Yeah. Who knows what that he wants to, you know. Exactly. So that's another issue that comes up. But they do work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do work. You can get them to work. You can. We work have some out. here. Yeah. Hmm. So. So. Well, I think it's something that the city's going to need to address because, short of um, <laughs> if the city wins the lottery and decides to take over all of the <laughs> privately owned parking lots and turn them municipal, then it's a moot point. 
and you know some of our neighbors have large municipal parking lots we don't we have a few small ones and because of the way the downtown shaped it wouldn't make sense to have one large central parking garage anyway um, because as Commissioner Morell says you're always walking away from your car in downtown Berkeley and likewise along the Woodward corridor so I think it's something that It, it would be very good to study this, I think, because this is going to be really th what is going to drive and solving this problem is going to, um, and, and getting it somewhat hammered out because it, it, as Woodward develops, as, you know, um, and when we see development along 12 Mile, I don't think that necessarily we're going to want to see additional houses taken down and single-use parking lots. I've heard that over and over again with regard to it sitting empty half the time. And if it's a matter of liability or if it's a matter of, well, yeah, and I've heard that too, that, well, I want this for the future, and I don't know how you get past that, that how much more do you need? Uh, we have one particular business owner that um, has a lot of parking, and uh, there was a temporary use that went on short term next door and uh, it, it ended up being shorter term. And it, uh, I think there was still enough parking. I, I don't think that there would have been a problem, but he, he was very adamant that this was costing him business. Not that he was looking at that, not the fact that he had 20 uh, potential customers that were standing by a temporary use that normally would not have been stopping there. And I don't know how you get past that. Well, that's the other thing, is a, Mr. Chairman. That's a self-centered, yeah. you know, me, me, me thing because, you know, we all talk. I've been doing this here a long time, as, as many of us have. And the whole point is to get complimentary businesses. So you want people to park mm -hmm. to a neighbor, allow someone to park for a neighbor's business, and maybe they'll go to your business. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that doesn't work both ways with a lot of uh, – no, business right. owners, as you know, right. and uh, there's there's s several business businesses in this town that you know, hey, it's my parking space, or right. it's my parking spaces, and no one else can park there. Right. Yeah, and that's I, I don't know how you argue with that. It was their it was their property. Well, I guess then it's a matter of you know motivation rather than arguing with it. I mean, yeah. certainly yeah. the law is on their side, but how do you motivate right. to have yeah. <sighs> encourage the shared parking? Because mm -hmm. that's going to add to the vitality of all of the business corridors, and it's going to keep the. But if they have the perception that sh uh, sharing parking is, you know, there's 20 customers that aren't going to be able to get to my business because I'm sharing parking. You're not going to break that. That's an attitude that's very difficult to break. Mm -hmm. That 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 attitude with some bu some business people. So, uh, mm -hmm. but there are ways to motivate. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Richardson. E I agree that I think I think this is a sort of a, the epitome of a of a long range mm -hmm. um, a long range uh, project. Um, so my comment is strictly of a preliminary uh, nature, but it, it just strikes me that the sounder approach is to move toward either outright city ownership or leasing. Perhaps leasing would be a little bit more of a flexible. Uh, the and city leasing. Yeah, and, and cheaper uh, alternative, I'm not sure. but And the reason I'm saying that is because, um, you know, you're really, in looking at parking from a citywide perspective, you're really talking about creating a, a commons, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a commons. And um, you really can't rely on individual owners to administer a commons, I think you need a third party, the city, to come in and, and that way everybody knows the rules, everybody's got a fair degree of confidence that they, they're being treated equally with everybody else and business owners will eventually know what to expect. Um, I think in the long range too, um, you know, I'm not a business owner, but do people go into business to become parking lot administrators? Uh, I don't think they do. I think taking that whole aspect of the business out of their hands while at the same time saying here in Berkeley you will, the city will provide you with adequate parking for your business, <coughs> I think would make 
Berkeley a more attractive place to locate your business. You wouldn't have to worry about providing for parking. It would be more or less taken care of for you. So, I mean, those are just my thoughts on it, more or less off the top of my head. But I kind of think, I kind of think that's the direction we should push toward uh, as, as as we study this. I, I, for what it's worth, that's what that's what I'm thinking. Mr. Chair, Mr. Gregor, uh, I'll note that. Um, we're, well, I guess we're probably in about our. 12th decade of talking about transit coming up Woodward um, <laughs> but um, it does actually look like it's more likely now than it ever has been before and if we have transit stops at Catalpa and Woodward and 12 mile and Woodward that's going to create a lot of development pressure around those transit stops and that's going to create parking issues down the road and at, I mean we've already experienced parking issues along Woodward um, in the most loud way possible this year. Um, and I, I really think that we're gonna get hit with that again and again and again once that transit comes in because you're gonna get a very different type of development pressure on that road when you have a real viable mass transit system over there. So that that's something to have definitely uh, in our minds as we move into the future. Okay, other comments? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Morrell, you and I have talked about parking an awful <laughs> lot yes. over the years. Yeah, well, and here we are back to it again. And we, I mean, we toiled over, you know, without planners or professionals or being able to hire somebody, the group of four of us sat through and we beat the parking ordinance up trying to ratchet down how much parking was required because we knew this was a problem. And you could say that if we don't, you know, we're not going to rezone any more residential to parking. We're just not going to do it anymore. And then what's out there is what's out there. And if you put your business in a spot that doesn't have enough parking, well, your choices are buy the business next door to your tear it down or don't build there. You can argue all you want about some of the more spectacular problems we've had um, I don't know if you remember the um, remember the window company that was on Greenfield where for a half hour every morning they had 75 cars because all of their window salesmen were like driving around all over the city but they had to be in the office for that 25 minutes and so there were cars all over the place because and they'd park on the residential streets and the residences all got mad and what are you gonna do it was for Half hour. Half hour in the morning, and then they were gone. Yeah. But they were going to be back every half hour. You know, the first thing I wrote down is maybe we should just tax private parking. We'll put, you got to pay us $100 a space every, every year if you want a parking spot. And then, but if you leave it open and you let people park there, you don't have to pay that tax. You know, you have to force people to be nice. Well, I don't, somehow I don't think that's going to fly. No, it ain't going to fly. <laughs> I have long been I have long been an advocate of drawing that line between commercial and residential development that says any residence on this side could become parking, but that's the line, and actually that's the problem. I've been because preaching. Right now, how long have I been preaching that? We don't have we don't we don't have any leg to stand on if somebody wants to buy a, 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 residence. a residence and yeah. and say. You know, we're gonna we want to tear this down and turn it into parking, and that's really part of the problem. Um, and I'm not, and I don't know. I mean, I think there's lots of, you know, cultural problems with having, you know, cars and all all of this stuff. And yeah, I remember, you know, I realized, you know, what I don't like about winter is driving. I like everything else. I don't mind the cold. I don't mind the wind. I don't mind. I, you know, if I can sit at home and watch it snow, <laughs> go ahead, let it snow. I just don't like driving it. And then I realized that's the only thing I don't like about summer, is I really don't like driving in it. <laughs> so when all is said and done, we're we're a victim we're we're a victim of of cars and we're a victim of parking. But I think that I think what we're missing is a regulation. Someone has to decide. You know, I agree. I don't want to see 
you know, sort of just take as much residential as you want, that, that would be crazy. Um, and I'd love to see people get along, but I've given up trying to legislate that. That just doesn't work. So I really do. I think, I think, we, need, I think we need to say once and for all or once until the next time we change it, where can we where can we change residential development into parking and, and where where is it not? Mm -hmm. Because that's that's the problem. Well, that's what I was trying. I was preaching that a long time ago. And nobody really wanted to draw a line. Well, you got two now. It's two I've, of us. I've right. always thought it was a good idea. Me. We've talked about it an awful lot. Many years to get two. <laughs> get two. <laughs> uh, I think Mr. Tangari yeah. wanted to say something. I I think there's a way you can develop standards so that it identifies so that it kind of governs the speed with which the neighborhoods are eaten into by parking. And I think that you can kind of, I mean, it could be rather than literally drawing a, you know, hard and fast line, it could be simply, there has to be some sort of proximity uh, to the, you know, development that's going to be utilizing the parking. If you're going to take the, the house, you know, there's, there's ways to develop standards that, control the the march of parking into the neighborhoods but also allow parking to move into the neighborhoods where it's needed because you're right if you if you don't allow parking to move into the neighborhoods at all you have a natural ceiling on the amount of development you can have in your downtown it's you're never going to get more than what you have if you can't have more parking so there is a way to develop some sort of i don't know if it would maybe be Parking is a special land use with a uh, you know, a condition that it has to abut the commercial area and has to be within 500 feet of the thing that's going to use it or something like that, just off the top of my head. But something along those lines could be developed, and I think if we want to take it on as a project, it would be a worthwhile project. You know, it wasn't all that long ago we were trying to encourage businesses to take residential and turn it into parking. I mean, we talked... We talked about, you know, the evil planning commission would just make parking a permitted use in residential districts, and then it would just take care of itself. <laughs> and but would, that would be the evil planning commission, and so we would never do that sort of thing. And and so it's funny how it's kind of gone around like full circle here. I, I think about the only thing we know for sure is we have to do something. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yeah. Right. Uh, Mr. Richardson. There may be merit in what Mr. Morell is proposing. I, I, don't, I don't know if it addresses Ms. Vanson's, but I take to be her main point, which is that we have enough parking essentially already in Berkeley. We, we, I don't know if our highest priority should be to work on what other areas can be converted to parking. Um, better utilization, and, and really my own perspective, better utilization of the parking that we have is should should be our top priority seems to me um, without ruling out what you're saying uh, 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 Commissioner Morell I, there are going to be circumstances where somebody else wants to come to town and probably would need some parking and we should have some rules for that but really we need to be thinking very hard about utilizing our existing parking uh, I feel as our top priority I think we need to look at the whole nine yards of it I hate to say that, but I think we do because, and it might be something that we might have to look at and then address it in the uh, master plan. But I do think we need to look at the whole nine yards of it from top to bottom. Yeah, I, I think you need to decide. I mean, this is. I like some you know, of it what ends I up heard. being the tail wagging the dog on this, and I say, you know, even before it came to a head this summer, well, yeah, yeah it's a permitted use, but yeah. you have enough parking, and then our parking is liberal enough in most instances. In most instances, unless it's in most very large instances, business, I think we're okay. Um, where, but. you know, you've got you're on Coolidge, for instance, and you've got your two parking spaces behind you, and that's it. And it's a small enough building that you really you can occupy it that's not a problem legally but I always say to the business owner can you be in business with that you've got two behind you and the rest is all a common right it's all the curbside parking can you make it work and so you just lay it on the line for them this is what you've got and I think um, a lot of times that works um, 
and I think if there happens to be a larger parking lot we have folks that have larger parking lots and of course it's just like water right that's where people park and some people some business owners handle that better than others and um, it, it's just I, I know I've had commissioners say they just it, it bothers them to see an empty parking lot half the time and I think it bothers everybody when you think of what could be there instead you want to mm -hmm. see it used all the time and I and I know you can't make people play nice in the sandbox, but boy, I really want to like <laughs> narrow it. So that's where you ha you have to, you you don't have to, but it's going to be really rotten for you if you don't. <laughs> sandbox that's smaller. That's what the taxes are for. That's what the parking lot tax. <laughs> okay, we'll work on that. I'll, I'll I, talk to the city attorney about that. I heard something <laughs> the other night that was very interesting, and I don't remember exactly where I heard it. it Might have been on one of the newscasts, but they were discussing. Um, residential it was actually they were talking about residential building and the trend is going to be to go away from um, two car garages and go back to one car garages because it looks like we're going to be going down to becoming more one car family oriented never happened never happen well and I think maybe nationwide it would I don't know that it will in the Motor City well um, I don't know that it will happen I but then I think in Berkeley you include the parking on the street at night yeah. so yeah. that we always have to have spare space how many people park space. one car in their garage yeah. they got too much junk now they got junk happen. I realize that but yeah. I got two cars in mine and a bunch of junk so do I <laughs> but we're, we're the exception to the rule I got <laughs> one car and I got a bunch of junk so <laughs> there I won't say never but it'll never but happen there's there it seems to be this tendency but anyway, that was brought up. But anyway, to get back to the parking thing, I, I kind of was listening to what Mr. Richard was, was saying about the leasing. I'm not sure exactly how to go about. He's the attorney. You figure you know, I, but I like the idea of what he was. There was something in his sure that he threw out on the table that was that kind of interests me. I don't know how the city would reflect on it. Oh, well, I, I, we've tried it a couple of times. Have we? Mm hmm And it didn't work? No. I'm afraid of the idea That's not to say it won't, but it yeah. hasn't. That I didn't companies know we will invest to leverage that and force the prices up. Um, at the two instances, one, it was a... Um, uh, it was the offer, you know, the city offered to lease it, and the price that came back was... <laughs> outrageous um, and so a thanks but no thanks was written to the property owner um, would have solved some again not a parking problem but a turf problem mm -hmm. um, and then with regard to uh, another um, option uh, another um, offer to do that um, it, the calls simply have not been returned I guess I in that respect, uh, in this idea of leasing, um, what about tax abatement? You know, I, I think it's something that we've got to look now at. I realize I can hear right. Mr. Well, and that's going, right. Well, me. you know, but that's it. We're a small city. There's yep. a, a finite revenue stream coming right. in, and so then you've got to decide how much is it worth. Yeah. And I think there's the city's idea of what we think that this would be worth, plus the fact that we would plow it and maintain it and all yep. of that, all of those kind of softer expenses. And then there's the idea of what the property owner believes it's worth and is willing to have it sit empty, right. even though there would be, it, they'd still have, they'd have their cake and eat it too, in my mind. And that's why I'm, I yeah. really, uh, I struggle with this because I, I don't understand it. Yeah. That's, you know, when I look at it as a business and I got this huge 50 car parking lot sitting there, I got to do maintenance on it on a regular basis. I gotta put lighting on it. I gotta have pay for lighting. I gotta pay yeah. and I'm paying for an empty lot half the time. Yeah. yeah, but every business and every piece of property is always for sale. Oh yeah. A lot of these people are just waiting for someone to come along mm -hmm. and if they're in a lease agreement with the city, you know, they can't again, it's an encumbrance on them selling their property to someone else who wants to put up a bigger building. You can't do that cities leasing those hundred parking spaces mm -hmm. I mean I, I'm just so I er, everything is whatever, everything is for sale 
always. It's just waiting for that person mm-hmm. to come up and make the offer. And uh, that's another thing. You know, you're going to find people, property owners, no, I don't want to give up any control. Or am I Whether right? I want, sure, I'll let people park. You know, he's a good guy. He'll let people park, but he's not about to give up control and let the, somebody lease it from him because you lose control of your future in this case that Mr. Moneybags comes along and wants to buy your piece of property from you. So that's probably a, a big part of it right there. There may be ways to persuade people to. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, could make to it, you could make it a term in the lease that if the property sold, the lease is gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean you, you could. You could. That. You it's could. Like but, you know, yeah. you know, the thing about drawing the line, I just want to bring something up. You know, we've. Uh, I think I was at the tail end of that uh, traffic. I, be, I When I first joined the Planning Commission, I joined the traffic or the uh, parking committee, and we never met again. So I don't know if that was my fault, but. Um, <laughs> Maybe they kept meeting without you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're just making sure I was a sucker and I'd go join other things. I don't know. It's a test. Yeah, that was a test. Um, but drawing a line, you know, we're rezoning people's property again. And, I, and, you know, <laughs> the Greenfield thing, yeah. we had a guy up here podium, threw his keys on the floor. Hey, take my house. Just take it. You know, you guys are going to take it anyway. Just take it now. So, you know, that's the big danger. Where do you draw the line? Because now you're downgrading, again, someone's property should they want to sell their property. And uh, that's, the, that's a big problem of drawing a line. So what you're saying is the line should be where the line is now. And I don't have a problem oh, I don't with that know. as long as what I'm saying is that we're hamstrung by the fact that we don't have a line. We are. And if the line, you know, I think that there probably are one or two properties that probably should be zoned to parking in this in this city. Oh, absolutely. And so, but absolutely. I'm not saying that the entire strip or that it's right. going to be like, you know, you'll put up a straight right. and go like that. Right. No. But, yes. but properties evolve over time. You know, yes. maybe a nice piece of property now and 10 years from now, boy, that's something we'd sure like to parking lot be a lot nicer on that piece than what we have there now. It, and, and the problem we have is things come to us one at a time. There's one here, there's one there, there's one there. You know, we, we can't predict what's going to happen. I guess, I guess my point is, is rather than letting market forces decide where we're going to be rezoning residential for parking, perhaps a well-considered body of thoughtful professionals like us can do that. It's like a master plan? Well, it's, it would. Well, even a policy <laughs> statement. Well, even a policy a statement. A parking line. policy statement. That says I have. I have no problem with that, but I. I believe in the market to decide. You know, we've. Well, I. I, I we saw last summer what happened when yeah. the market tried to decide. <laughs> well, that's an extreme situation. It I mean, is. I it agree. is. That is, and those will pop up every now and then. But, you know, I. I. You know, there's no problem with a policy statement, but to. No, no. I don't think that's something that we can predict and control. You know, I not, don't know if that's what we're looking to do. I, I think we need agile co- agile ordinances. I do agree. Thank I, I yeah. do agree there needs to be some agility. Yeah. Well, and I think, like uh, Commissioner Tengeri alluded to, um, if somebody's looking at a rezoning, do they need to have shown that they have tried X, Y, and Z within existing parking lots within 500 feet? No. I don't have a problem with that either. That's what a PUD is. No, 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 no. I, it's different. It's meaning, well, I want to do this, and well, have you looked at having you don't have enough parking? Right. Do you have you looked at shared parking agreements oh, okay, with this, in that one, respect, this yeah. one, this yeah, one, yeah, this yeah. one, this one, this one, and this one? Yeah. And until you've got dear John letters from all of them saying yeah. they won't play nice, then we're not going to consider a rezoning of another house. You know, I, I'm sitting here listening to this, and, and I kind of believe in letting the market determine where the parking is going to go. Because if we had had a, a line 25, 30 years ago, we wouldn't have a Westbourne market today. Yes, we would. Lines can always be redrawn. Yeah, but that's what you would have had to do. But if you're going to put a hard line in place and say, this is it, you know. I don't so. know where that hard line would have been. So I yeah. Can't argue, I can't, yeah. I, I can't right. argue it one way or another with you. Right. But I would, my, my inclination is um, looking at it and looking at all of the studies that have we've seen of Woodward and what have but, but you. I would say the line is 
over the next over the next 25 years woodward is going to change well mm -hmm. everybody says it's going to yeah. change well they've been saying that for 120 years well it has it has and is it going to change toward parking though it's one thing that's if it's a five-story building i think it's different when it's a parking lot that sits yeah. empty half the right, time right 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 i don't think anybody's talking about not having development on woodward it's what that in between right. the woodward and the residential is going to look and like. if mass transit's so wonderful why do we need more parking park and ride Park and ride. Park and ride. I know they go that way too, or that way, whatever way they go. But I'm thinking about people coming in here. Yeah. 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 I'm looking at the city from the standpoint that I, that we probably need to increase the density of of the city in certain areas with more residential, tighter townhouses and that mm -hmm. type of construction, mm -hmm. and we are sorely in need of that right yep. now. Um, and how do we provide for that? And I think in some instances we've looked at that, and we sort of have it covered. But I'm not. I sure. think we have it for a little. That's I a that's a problem do. of land acquisition. Yeah, with a, a city full of 40 foot lots, you know, it's tough to. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem. But unfortunately, we had a situation a number of years ago where there was a big parcel of land, and it all turned into single family residential. Yeah, but location is important too. But you're right. Well, but yep. that, that, I think but that would have been that, a good, that, good location right, for, right, right, for I think a multi family. Too. I think you're it right. would have been excellent area. for some townhomes or something like along that line. So, well, I think we. It was a good discussion. Good session, but I think we 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 needed to. Well, it carry wasn't going to get solved tonight. Farther. Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that would be amazing, wouldn't it, if we had solved it tonight? <laughs> no, we would. I knew we would never solve it. I don't think. I honestly don't think it'll ever be solved. Oh, <laughs> it, it might. It may be that we already have a perfect ordinance. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, who knows? I, I'm always interested in copying ideas that other communities have adopted. So. When we revisit this, to the extent you can gather material or at least You're going to want to build a municipal parking structure. Mm -hmm. That's what your neighbors have done, but I don't know what it would be shaped like. Well, <laughs> that can't be the only <laughs> solution. <laughs> but <laughs> if it parking is fine, meters. But if, parking it, if it is, <laughs> I'll story look at that too. But <laughs> do that would like. be the next step here yeah. is parking let, meters. Let, let's, no. I, I would just no, like no, to have, you build a municipal lot. have some resources to see what other... Uh, Communities similar to ours uh, have how they how they've approached this problem. I, I'm yeah I've done that and happy to I have not found anything that. Um, Those are your answers. Yeah, okay. that or, or paid permit parking like they have in Royal Oak. We have to pay to park in front of your house. Well, that's kind of what this alludes to. No, it's well no it's saying that if you want to park in my front in front of my house you have to pay. But only well, if I also say says, it's okay. No, if you park, you can park in front of your own house because it goes back. The, there's some comments in here historically. Why do we claim? Right. It's not really my right. Right. To ha that's not my spot. That's that's city property. Right. But but, but he concedes that and says, okay, that's, that's going to be there. Because that's what so we do. Right. But the things in here was, you know, maybe it's a you pay twenty dollars a year to park in front of your house, and somebody else will pay five hundred dollars a year. Right. It's a nominal thing. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not speaking into my microphone, but yeah, no, I mean that you're right. Because yeah. why would you park a piano Nominal in front of your house? Yes. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on. That's where we are. I guess we sort of beat that all off. You're down to citizen comments, my friend. I'm down to citizens' comments. Is there anyone who care to make any citizens' comments at this point in time to our meeting? Hearing nobody stepping up to the microphone, then I will move on to liaison reports, staff comments, and what have you. Uh, environmental, anything? Uh, yes, um, I was uh, privileged to attend a, a uh, joint meeting of uh, area environmental commi committees uh, uh, at Alex's restaurant a couple uh, here in Berkeley a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had representatives from Royal Oak, Pleasant Ridge, Ferndale, um, Dearborn, 
uh, and um, I believe uh, uh, Madison Heights uh, at that meeting in addition to myself and uh, uh, it was basically a get acquainted meeting uh, we um, uh, discussed uh, the various approaches that environmental committees and these different communities have uh, have taken their differing priorities um, we agreed to meet again and begin to collaborate more more carefully because uh, there was a general consensus at that meeting that all of the committees wanted to broaden their mission and they wanted to put more on their plate and one way of doing that would be to collaborate with neighboring communities on uh, projects of joint interest uh, that perhaps attract have a better chance of attracting state and federal funding than um, if we all go uh, in our individual direction so um, I can foresee uh, you know joint um, educational projects uh, more work on uh, on um, complete streets related issues such as bike lanes and um, uh, other other initiatives other possible initiatives uh, uh, community gardens other things um, I think that uh, I think that it's a sound approach and I hope that we can uh, continue to collaborate uh, we're off to a pretty promising start um, so that, that'll that'll do it for the environmental committee okay thank you mr. chair can we comment on sure response? you want to oh. make a so mr. Richardson uh, the next time you have an environmental committee meeting, perhaps you should ask the committee about the joint Woodward 5 sustainability plan that the city entered into with Royal Oak, Pleasant Ridge, Ferndale, and Huntington Woods that actually captures all of what you were just saying. It mm -hmm. captures the collaborative efforts that are being undertaken, that are looking forward in the future and how they all tie together. That plan brings it all together. The city entered into that agreement. I think Oakland County championed that for them. It's dated, what year is this, 2014? So 2012, 2013, something like that. I will send you a copy of the plan. But it's out there and it gives you a framework mm -hmm. for all of that that you just talked about. It, Dearborn wouldn't be included in that because they're not part of the Woodward Five. But the five communities that are contiguous, um, it does. Well, thank you for that comment. I, I, I am um, uh, familiar in general terms with the, uh, the document that you're referring to. Um, I probably should say that our committees are strictly of an advisory nature. Understood. So Understood. We're, um, we're kind of hoping to be the think tank, I guess, that would Catalyst. generate ideas through the framework that you're sure. mentioning. Um, and um, it, it, ideally that's that's what we'll be able to do but it will be up to the communities themselves to and, and the people that work for them to actually um, you know, take the ball and run with it right. but the communities did help write the plan so that's why yeah. and the city council as well as city staff on each of those five communities as well as the community had input on all of those so mm -hmm. that kind of work is the groundwork has been laid on those okay well, thanks mm -hmm. DDA, do you want to make any comments or do you just want to go on your report? I'm just going with the report. Okay. Chamber? Chamber. I did attend the chamber meeting earlier uh, this month. Let's see, they're working on some holiday plans. There's going to be some, they're doing something called Berkeley Bucks. So Bless you again. Uh, around the holidays with uh, some of the local businesses that you can buy these. You know, kind of like like their own currency type of thing that they're doing. And uh, chamber holiday party will be December eighth. Eleventh. Is it the eleventh? It's a no. Thursday, right? Not a Monday. Oh, I thought it's it was a Monday? a Monday. It's a Monday. It might be the eighth. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the eighth. It's a Monday. Let me double check because I put it on my calendar. Where's the name? At uh, Republica. 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 I'm I surprised it? because it was the 11th and the DDA meeting. Mm, I don't have it on my, I thought I put it on my I calendar. I thought it was a Monday also. Yeah, I thought it was too because I thought it was the night before our meeting. So yeah. unfortunately I don't have my notes with me. 
Okay. I'll follow up with an email on it. And uh, show, up, show up twice. And then they're working on uh, some uh, an, another mailer going to all the homes as well as uh, another uh, another map with more advertising. So okay. that's, that's about what's going on. Did I hit everything? I guess I did. Hmm. Council meeting. I was at the council meeting on the 17th. Um, mm, I was expecting to see some of our stuff on there, but I, I don't know why I was thinking that, but there was nothing for the Planning Commission. But there were a couple interesting things that came up. The uh, Berkeley Public Library put out their annual report, which was very interesting. Um, to give you some idea, the total circulation for 2013-14 there's 149,803 items that included books, downloads, music CDs, DVDs, and uh, even books on CDs. Interesting amount a comment also was made about the number of Berkeley Public Library card holders. There's 7,960 people who have library cards, which is very interesting. That's very good, you know, for what's going on um, within our community in the support of our city library, which is doing a phenomenal job. So I found that kind of interesting. Uh, the other thing was that the DDA has put, is putting some money towards the downtown decorations this year. I think some of that's going up now or it is up. Sure. Um, and um, there's a tree now at Columbia Tree at Robina and there's some other stuff that's going up around the city and then the city will be putting on the lights on the lamp post on the light post I guess that's coming up shortly so there was money approved to do this additional decoration for the and it'll all be done by the time of the parade which I believe is the 6th of December so those were the issues that were on uh, I thought would be were very interesting to the uh, to what was transpiring in Berkeley. So with that, I guess I will run around the room and see what happens. I guess I'll start down at the other end, Mr. Tanger. Um, I have nothing to report. <laughs> or okay. Ms. Tato. Nothing to add. Ms. Buckler. Nothing to add and happy Thanksgiving to all. Mr. Morrell. Oddly, I have nothing to add. Mr. Moran. I was just gonna say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Well, same happy Thanksgiving. Mr. Richardson. I'll uh, third or fourth that happy Thanksgiving <laughs> to uh, everyone. Well, Mr. Smith. Um, I just want to mention the DDA. It's good to see that they're taking on the 12 mile Robina project, whatever that might ultimately be. Some of us put a, some effort into that and yep. it's glad to see someone's picking up the, picking up the flag and running with it. Yep. So something that we need badly. Ms. Vanson. Uh, reminder, your next meeting is December 9th. And uh, packets will be ready to pick up uh, at Public Safety on Thursday the 4th. Uh, you won't get an email from me because I won't be here, so. You will not be I here? I will not be here on the 4th, so you won't get an email from me saying the packets okay. are ready to pick up. So oh, okay. write yourself a little reminder that'll beep on the 4th saying packets are ready to pick up. All right. So. Because I'm going to do them tonight. <laughs> You're doing them tonight. Yep. So what's on the agenda? Uh, we have a facade and site work at 3391 12 Mile. I don't know what one that is. It's been vacant for a long time. So. Okay. okay. Is, that is that the old Hillers? No. You've already seen the old Hillers. Yeah, this is something new. Excellent. So a little cliffhanger for a couple weeks. You guys get to figure out what 3391 12 mile is. And, uh, and then you'll just have the two public hearings that you set tonight. Right. Um, okay. it, would it be appropriate to ask uh, what the status of uh, the set a garage issue is? Uh, or would uh, they, they've developed the parking lot at 1010 Eaton minus the screen wall. Um, our city attorney is in the midst of um, with various other things that he has responsibilities on. Um, drafting some kind of an agreement 
uh, between T-Mobile and the Vincetta owners to do some sort of property swap at the remaining two Eaton properties. I know he's in the midst of drafting that, but um, we, we've been putting him to work with various other things, so I, I know that that is. I followed up with him today on it, and um, he knows it needs to be done. So that that is the status of that. At Thank this you. Point. Um, the Oxford properties that I know are of concern to the, the neighbors. The council, a number of years ago, when all of the banks, uh, when the banking crisis happened in 2008, did pass a um, vacant property ordinance. There was a lot of concern on the part of council um, wanting to give a reasonable lead time for folks that had put their property up for sale. There and. So, and I know that the properties aren't for sale on Oxford, or at least they're not advertised for sale, but there wasn't any caveat put in the ordinance. And the ordinance says that once the property is the property owner's notified that you need to comply, you need to register it as vacant, they have 90 days in which to either sell it, um, provide plans to redo something with it, reoccupy it, um, or register it as vacant. And so we are still within that 90-day window. So they were sent notice um, of it and um, that they will need to, to, to do that by the end of um, by the end of the year is when their notice go is going to expire. So that doesn't mean they have to occupy it, it just means they have to register it and have it inspected. Or what happens if they don't comply? Um, it is a misdemeanor if they don't. Okay. All right, I don't have anything else further this evening other than to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Morrell. I move we adjourn. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Murat. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Meetings adjourned.